from London, England, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube covering Discover 2015. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Everyone, we are here live in London, England for HP Enterprise, HPE Discover uh, 2015. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle, and my co-host Dave Vellante, founder of Wikibon.com. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from noise. Our next guest is Bill Philbin, VP of Virtual Development Unit Storage at HP Enterprise Storage. Welcome back to theCUBE, great to see you. Hey, John, Dave, how are you? Good to see you Bill. So storage is still hot. Again, yes. since 2010, it's been the hottest thing, but it's changing more now than ever. You're seeing a lot of companies went public, pure storage went public. That's right. Um, and kind of like flatten out. You're seeing a lot of M&A activity. You know, NetApp's trying to figure things out. Right. Um, software is now shifting the game. You've got all flash arrays. You have all different kinds of architectures. That's right. Customers are looking for new, new ways to mm -hmm. take the storage and go to the next level. Right. The next right. big thing. So what's going on with you guys? Take us through some of the current news and how does this relate to that, those building blocks of storage? Well, you know, I think this, the storage business is radically, radically going to change over the course of the next couple of years, right? And I don't know if it's just the new entrance in the market or if it's the Dell EMC sort of, you know, if that deal sort of actually you know, gets consummated or not, but it, clearly the storage industry is changing. One of the things that, that, that we see changing the most, obviously, is the customer's um, dis decision desire to move uh, storage closer to the application. So whether it is the pure software defined, whether it is the hyper-converged plays that are out there, or whether it's frankly just being able to consume the infra infrastructure they have, a la the composable infrastructure announcements we've done this morning, it's all about customer choice, right? And I think what you're seeing is we're moving from these sort of converged systems which are fixed sort of building blocks. And the hyper-converged guys suffer from the same uh, you know, restrictions to a composable infrastructure which is all about customer choice, right? I want you know, this much compute and this much storage. If you do that in a traditional hyper-converged box, you have fixed compute and you have fixed storage you know, requirements. And if you don't like that or if you, if you need more, you buy, another, you buy another box. But HP, we actually believe the customer needs, some, needs choice. So you want to buy a hyper-converged box, we got one of those. You want to do software-defined on a server, we got one of those. You want to do conventional storage with a three bar, we got one of those. And the, the benefit of that is it's not sort of uh, you know, the least common denominator, right? These are all best of breed solutions from, between store virtual and store, and store serve, which is you know, three par, best of breed, all sort of can provision in the same common user, user interface. So we think that there's, you know, you know, that HP is actually well positioned for this, for the uh, The number one question I get asked yeah. from practitioners when I hang out with the Wikibon analysts yeah. is, hey, I love all the speeds and feeds and stuff going on in the industry, and I love right. more lower latency, all that stuff. Yeah. I want more of everything that's coming around the corner, right. but I got an engine room called storage and compute and data center that I don't want to screw up, yeah. and I want to actually evolve it so the best of breed thing kind of comes out. So take us through some of the things that you're here, and, there, and the number one question right. is, how do I get the future without killing the present, right. per se, because they are running an engine room, per se. Storage is power in their business. Uh -huh. They're kind of adding some innovation around it, but they want to get to the next level. What, how do you talk to that customer, and what does HP have for that? Well, I think what customers are really looking for, first of all, is simplicity, which is why I think there's some of the attractiveness around the composable infrastructure story or the hyper-converged story. It's all around simplicity, right? And that simplicity oftentimes is relative to the application provider or the provisioner. One of the trends that we're seeing in the industry is you're moving away from sort of these purpose-built positions, a storage administrator, backup administrator, et cetera, to actually enabling the application administrator to actually own the, the provisioning of storage or the provisioning of data protection. Because it's all around cost ownership at the, at, the, at the end of the day, right? So one of the things that, if you look at sort of what HP has done with the, the HP OneView announcements we've done today, is that you can actually provision server storage and networking same common framework, which is the one-year framework, right? And actually makes that, you know, that, you know, that application enablement much more effective. And I think that, you know, to some degree, that's where the hyper-converged guys are sort of, you know, leading the business. The last time you and I talked, we were talking about cloud, if I remember. Yeah. And we were talking about, you know, that, the dirty little secret, I think I said, which was <laughs> behind all those cloud, you know, implementations, it's actually conventional storage, right? Um, yeah. I think this, you know, the same is essentially true with the hyper-converged vendors, in the sense that while cloud is attractive from the easy to provision, the cost, et cetera, people still want enterprise reliability, yeah. resiliency, et cetera. 
I think the hyper-converged vendors are also going to drive us the same way, you know, like our HC250, which is you can build it, install it, and get it running storage in less than 15 minutes. That sort of easy to use, application deployable technology is where the whole industry will move to, but yeah. eventually it's going to move back to the guys who, who know how to do enterprise Yeah, and since we last talked too, the cloud has also changed the mindset of the, some of the practitioners, like they see cloud as a great way to say, okay, we're DevOps now, which is right. agile, which right. is basically code word for, hey, I need more storage now. Yeah. So like the scale question comes up. So it's, it's not so much doing cloud per yeah. se, like doing some cloud is easy, right. relatively easy, scaling, it is very difficult. Well, it's, it's the 80-20 problem, yeah. right? The, the first 80%, you know, you spend 20% of the work to do. The other 20%, you spend the rest, the other 80% yeah. actually get it done, right? But, you know, I think that... Um, How do you guys address the scale question? Because that's really the thing. Like, okay, I'm bought into the cloud and right. hybrid. I'm going to do a little bit of public, mostly on-prem, sure. and some hybrid. But I got to scale up now. I got to really yeah. build out my, and, and spend some more cash. Right. And get my app guys programming with low latency, in memory, all that that's good right. stuff. Yeah, and I think that's. It, I think if you take a look at work we're doing around o OpenStack or the initiative that HP Enterprise now I have to say um, uh, is doing around the do you know Docker and other container initiatives. It's actually actually you know making storage really easy to provision behind yeah. you know that that prevailing technology, right? So um, so a lot of things, a lot of good things happening there. So Bill, you were You're talking about quiet. I was going to say. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to jump in now. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. so we talked about composable infrastructure yeah. before. And sort of juxtaposing it to the traditional, tr now traditional, the, right. the, the hyper-converged guys. If I, if I understood what you're saying correctly, you're able to scale resources independently. Correct. Right, and so uh, I wonder if, and that's really the main difference. That's and, right. And so I wonder if you could talk about that difference and then specifically how you maintain balance. Mm -hmm. Right, because the, the hyper-converged guys would say, well, you know, we could kind of do that too, and we're going to maintain balance, so I wonder how you yeah. would respond to that, and, and how you so guys I, approach that. So the way that we, we think about the problem, Dave, is that unfortunately applications don't simply um, behave with fixed compute and fixed storage boundaries, right? So I don't have this nice and easy relationship between the two. So you got to do, be able to do a couple of things. One is, when you're out of balance, or when you've got an application that's heavy storage or light compute, you've got to be able to extend off the back of a hyper-converged uh, system, right? And so, one of the things, other interesting things that we see happening is these hyper-converged systems are like any other bespoke appliance in the data center. Over time, like an all flat, you know, the all-flash systems that used to be out there, over time, customers are going to look to actually move those to, um, to a conventional storage or, you know, a, or simplification effort, right? Hyper-converged is the same, the same way. So one, you've got to be able to extend storage off the back. Second, it's got to be able to talk to what you've got within your data center. So for example, store virtual, you can deploy a physical appliance, you can deploy a hyper-converged appliance, or you can deploy a software-only appliance, and the data federates, and you can actually peer motion between them. Okay, so in that way, customers actually, in the case where they've got a hot application that's running a hyper-converged platform, you can actually peer motion it to a physical appliance. I think one day, what you should be able to do is actually be able to peer motion that not only from a store virtual box, but peer motion it actually to a three bar box, right? And that's all about the, the choice that we're talking about. Okay, so I wanted to ask you about the portfolio. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you guys have made a lot of effort to try to simplify the portfolio, uh, and at the same time do some base level integration. Peer yeah, motion sure. is an yeah. example of that. Talk more about that sort of integration So if you strategy. look now, you look now, you know, really what we're on a path on is you've got one view for sort of the composable infrastructure story. You, now you've got store virtual and, and uh, store once as well as store, uh, store serve, right, three par, actually now employing the same sort of user interface that the one view guys do. So now it looks like all these things from the, come from the same company. More importantly, the training effort you know, between the two is, is greatly reduced. So that's, that's the first, uh, the first uh, answer. The second answer is within that, what you ought to be able to do is actually be able to not just online migrate, which is really, it's a one-way transaction, which we can do today. You ought to be actually be able to federate not only homogeneously between three-par boxes, between store virtual boxes, but you also should be able to federate from a store virtual uh, box to a three-par box. Now, we're not quite there yet, um, but that's essentially where we see the mission going. So if you've got a remote office s site, where you've deployed a hyper-converged AC250 platform, You've got three par in your data center. Data should federate between the two, so, th so that not only for a disaster recovery scenario, but also for a work balance scenario, you should be able to do that. And actually, it should be an, uh, a non-event from a customer to actually know the storage that's sitting underneath. That's sort of where we're headed. Okay, so you're, 
putting a lot of your time and energy into simplification, Correct. I'm hearing. Um, I wonder if you could talk about how that is rippling through to the channel. Yeah. Um, because you know, most of the channel today still is selling tin. Correct. Um, but they all know they have to transform yeah. into more of a Well, if not, their customers will, will, you know, the customers will move from them, right? So yeah, right, they're just going to disappear. Right. Um, and, and so, how, how are you supporting that? I mean, how does the simplification you know, initiative sort of support the channel? What are you seeing there in terms of what they're asking for mm -hmm. as an extension of the customer? So, you know, if you, if you look at what customers are looking for is they're looking for simplicity. There's still a lot of opportunity for, for our channel partners to actually add value around it. Today, if you're going to go off and consume a, a competitive product, let's say, you know, three little, three little, uh, 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 three little, three little word acronym, you've got to be a specialist in backup in three different versions of SAN, you know, NAS, et cetera, et cetera, right? Is, that, is, are they, is the value, uh, the, the channel partner really adding value there? Probably not, because the customer actually doesn't care to some degree, it's hosting their applications. So through simplicity actually allows the channel partner to actually understand the customer's business better and actually drive a set of integrated services around fewer moving pieces and parts. So I think that's actually a good story uh, for, a channel, for a channel partner to get their head around. Yeah, so, so leads to my next question, yeah. which is, as you simplify and then enable the mm -hmm. channel partner to transform their business more into solutions, yeah. how does that affect how you do development? Is there more of a solutions focus? Absolutely. Is that sort of, maybe talk about the roadmap yeah, Absolutely, so I think if you think, you think about sort of where we're headed, and, I, and I'll, I'll, I'll call this an app, uh, application -centric, centric model, more and more of our customers are driving the choices they make um, from storage or data protection from the console that the application is running within, right? So, what they want is simplicity. At the point I provision a VM, they want to actually provision data protection at the same time. I was at a customer in uh, APJ about six months ago. They had provisioned 5,000 new virtual machines. They were very excited about it, right? But they neglected to tell the backup administrator they had provisioned 5,000 virtual machines. And they had an outage, and they had data loss. Yeah. If at the time they provisioned the virtual machines, if the, the, v, the VMware administrator or the Hyper-V administrator had actually, could actually provision storage and data protection together, those kinds of problems uh, wouldn't happen. Another good example is people who want to sit, you know, database administrators who in a DevOps model, right? That's the new catchphrase, right? Rather than calling the backup administrator to make a backup to restore to use for a dev and testing model, uh, with the Store Once product, they can actually sit in Oracle RMN and conduct a backup and make a backup on their own. So that whole application-centric administration model, which scares the CIOs, frankly, is where we see the business going. Scare CIOs because now you got more hand. You, a, you, you, you know, you have you, uh, you have some de determining uh, degree of loss of control. You're making it self-service, though. Exactly right? right. But but loss of control, single point of single single point of glass. If I'm looking at data protection, where I've got everything in my backup ISV, data protector, what have you. Those sorts of um, constraints is a trade-off between application and self-enablement self from central control, right? It, and that's it, what sort of makes I CIOs see. nervous. It's, it's arcane, but it works, and they have a body on it. Exactly but right. It, but it doesn't scale. It doesn't scale. Right, and, and, and it's going to be a disaster. To it, your example before. That's exactly how right. How do I back up 5,000 VMs if I don't know I have to back up 5,000 exactly VMs? Exactly right. <laughs> so I think we will see that, we'll, we'll certainly see that, that, that sea change. You know, I was with the customer this morning, exact same conversation. That's that sea change they're going through, which is where do they actually draw the lines between that central pane of glass for data protection and the fact they want to enable their application administrators to more rapidly respond to business requirements, right? Good news is you can do both with HP, uh, HPE, um, but we see more of this on the, on the, on the application-centric side happening. And, and, and the point you're making about backup is it's, it can't keep being a bolt-on, it's got to be part of the initial design Correct. and architecture. Correct, and that's, you know, if you look at Software Defined, you know, last time I think I was here I said, and my uh, kids like this, I said, we were cool for school before everybody was talking about Software Defined, right? Store Virtual now, almost yeah. 10 years inside of uh, Healer Packard, was doing Software Defined from the, from the very get-go. We not only have a Software Defined story for Block, we also have a Software Defined story for uh, data protection as well. Right, because you can't do one and not have the other. And I think over time, what you'll see is, you know, uh, you know, maybe you know, data, uh, in a software-defined version for file, or you know, the, the, the sort of that, those steps will continue along the way. So you can actually build, if you will, your own version of the storage that you know, storage layer that you want. You yeah. know, we've got a customer who takes Store Virtual, 
and has deployed it on uh, DL380s, uh, you know, uh, from the HP server team, and has put them in all of their uh, you know, uh, remote office locations because they have the skill set effectively to do that. And it replicates nightly back to the store virtual instance in the data center. And, and the other part of your R&D story that I'm hearing is choice. Correct. So if you want an appliance, we got an appliance. If you want just software only. Correct. So how are you seeing? And I actually think, I actually think what, what, what we, what'll end up happening, Dave, is that customers won't have to make that, you know, choice also is complication, right? And so why make that, why have to make that choice? So I think what you're going to see over time is rather than deploying a physical appliance versus a virtual appliance, we ought to make deploying the virtual appliance similar to what the look and feel and capabilities are in the physical appliance. So today you apply a virtual appliance um, and uh, you've got a hardware issue. It's, it's up to you, the integrator, right, the end customer to actually determine what happened. If you deploy a physical appliance, guess what? Something bad happens with hardware, the appliance takes over and actually alerts you and makes all those changes. Why do you have to make, those, why do you have to make that choice? I think what you're going to see is our ability to actually bring these two things together. So if a customer wants to deploy a virtual appliance in all of its glory, out into their ecosystem, that we should be able to enable you uh, to do that from Hewlett Packard. I think that's what's going to end up happening. Mm -hmm. How about, how about, I wonder if we don't have much time here, but I wonder mm -hmm. if you could weigh in on some yeah. of the changes that you're seeing in the industry. Dell, acquisition of EMC, you saw John yep. mentioned Pure, went, yep. went public, you know, David Scott's famous comment about these guys, they won't achieve escape velocity. I wonder if you could weigh they in. They went public know. with escape velocity, you know, at least from a liquidity standpoint. Pretty good exit, David, but David, well, we'll David, see. David you know, Scott, we'll see. who is he? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's a legend. He's a legend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what was we the phrase? Uh, pa <laughs> um, his um, polymorphic. Yes. Polymorphic. Yeah, polymorphic. Yeah. Yeah. We, we no longer use that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, look, I think a couple of things. One, as I said earlier, I think in the next couple of years, the whole storage climate is, is absolutely going to change. And I don't think it's driven by cloud. I think it's actually driven by customers wanting you know, a different options. That's number one. You know, number two, um, there are guys out there like Pure, you know, competing against 3PAR. We, you know, I think we have a really, really, very good story with them against 3PAR. You have EMC and Dell, probably couldn't happen to two nicer guys, right? As Meg has said, that's going to go into some sort of swirling mass of cultural... What's her, what's her quote? She's been working on deleverage for how many years yeah, now? Yeah, exactly. It's called the turnaround. They're in a little a sinking hole right now. Yeah. I mean, there's a little bit, not a little bit, a big, Stuck in the mud. Yeah, there's mentality. a lot of customers we're talking to who, you know, perhaps maybe, you know, were happy with their choice before, and now actually giving HP a, a choice because we look like the stable partner, right? So I think that's happening, I, and I think the bottom line is, regardless of all that. So they think you're more stable oh, than Dell, absolutely, BMC, because absolutely. of their absolutely. transaction, right? But you know what? Eventually, all that'll sort. Pure will have whatever success it has. Our job is actually to innovate for the customer and actually provide them capabilities that they, they, where they don't have to go look anywhere else. So if you look at, again, software defined, we're yeah. there. Hyper-converged, we're there. Converged systems with 3PAR, we're there. Composable infrastructure, we're, you know, we're there. Well, it points to, the, it points to integrated, right. integrated I, technologies, not a pure play store. So it, the question we are asking, yeah. this is where Dave kind of come in, for, yeah. kind of be nice with mentioning David Scott, is that we've been, we're overtly saying, can there be a pure play storage in this new market? Because that kind of limits a little bit, not a little bit, a lot of what you can do if the demand from the customer is words like composable, agile, integrated stacks, yeah. application, DevOps, yeah. a feel for more than just storage. Well, right? you, know, you guys know I left uh, the uh, storage company with N in their, in their name five years ago because I actually believe, believed in the converged system story and I think I was actually a little ahead of my time because now what we're actually seeing over the yeah. course of the last year or so is that actually turning into into reality. Is there always a place for pure play? Sure. Not the market cap potentially that they're, and the sales velocity that they're seeing today. It becomes a much smaller market segment. It becomes, becomes a much smaller market segment, right? Um, but we believe, you know, if, you, if I think about the acquisitions that we've done at HP, 3 part was a good acquisition. Store Virtual was a really good acquisition. We didn't know it at the time. It was a really, really good acquisition. It leaves us positioned to actually provide the customer, you know, that opportunity and that, uh, and that choice. So I'm not, the bottom line I guess is, I can hope for all the bad things to happen in the industry to all, the, all my friends out there, or I can innovate, bring the products together, make it easier for customers con to consume yeah. them, and then deliver that business value. And that's the one thing I, that we can control at Hewlett Packard, is our ability to do that. And then well, if let, the, let the rest of the chips fall where they may. Well, there's a difference between critical infrastructure and add-on. That's right. I mean, at the end of the day, that's right. You're in the engine room. You want to be working on the main, yeah. the main we, stuff. We, we want our stuff to be, you know, to, to continue to have the success that we're we're yeah. showing the market today. 
Okay. So what's around the corner? Bill, share some final comments here. What's around the corner? Where do you see the market spinning in terms of customer next step? Where is this accelerating to? Where will the yeah. puck be yeah. uh, in, in a few years that you guys see? So I think, obviously, you know, we can't turn our backs on cloud. I think cloud will continue to be important, although, you know, frankly, enterprise customers in cloud still seems to be a, you know, an oxymoron, right? Everybody's playing, no one's actually, no one's actually doing. I think uh, Composable is interesting. However, I think server and storage can be doing more things together as flash goes into the server. Um, and storage is a persistence layer. I think you're going to see some interesting ha things happening there. I'm ass assuming yeah. we're going to talk about the machine at some point here <laughs> this week, I'm, right? And you're going to see more of that happening where the server can actually um, you know, hint to the storage about next pages they're going to bring in together. And we're the number one server, you know, in the, in the number one server vendor, so that sort of work is going to proceed. And I think that, uh, frankly, I think this whole computing model where server storage and networking is actually take, in, taking hold I think that'll be the other, the other thing that'll happen. So it's it's composable infrastructure, it's cloud, and it's and converges mainstream. Yeah, totally I don't you know mainstream. I don't think we're you know you still you'll, early, but I think customers now don't have to be educated anymore. And I think that's where we were in the last couple of years was having to educate customers what converge systems was, and it's easier than polymorphic simplicity, clearly. Um, but we don't have to educate customers anymore. Now it's sort of like, you know, do you have one of these? Do you have one of those? Do you have one of these? And well, boardroom conversation is app development. I want to have new experiences. That's right. And under the hood is that's right. the engine room, right? That's the power at all. That's right. Well, <laughs> I, I like to think I don't work in the engine room, John, but you know, yes, I guess no, maybe well, the, well, the guys throw some Twinkies down to me in a, in a no, couple well, the of guys, uh, uh, the, guy, the, guys, the guys powering the apps yeah. will be server storage. That's exactly right. It is, you know. That's exactly yeah, a right. nice engine to power yeah. that. I think the beauty is all it's going to come down to software. Engine room middle of me sounds a little bit more. No, it's okay. I'll, have to, I'll probably have to answer that back to the engineers back at home when well, I get back. Well, say more so like the Ferrari engine. The Ferrari. 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 Ferrari engine under the Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. BB, <I'm> <laughs> Less latency, more power. <laughs> more power. Lithium <laughs> crystals are. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, thanks for coming yeah, on the cube. Really guys. appreciate it. This is the cube. We're here, Bill. Bill Ben. We'll be right back with more after this short break. From the engine room here.